thank you for the opportunity. This is my first job to interview an eminent scientist in our field, uh, Professor Ding Xiaoli from Hong Kong Polytech University, uh, Department of Geoinformatics. <laughs> Uh, land and the geoinformatics. So, so my 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 duty, my question, my objective is to ask Professor Ding, uh, for example, what does he do, uh, and and for how long, and so on. And then I have a follow up question, as uh, to in terms of educating uh, uh, young students in in Hong Kong. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Professor Sheng. Uh, I know you are a world-leading scientist in geoscience. So in the past years, actually, I have learned a lot from you. Uh, my field, actually, is the same as Professor Sheng. Uh, we are in the so-called geodesy. Geodesy basically studies the Earth. You know, for example, the, the configuration of the Earth, the size, the shape and the dynamics of the Earth and so on. Um, in Hong Kong, uh, our department is called Land Surfing and Geoinformatics. So we actually educate students in the field of so-called Land Surveying. Uh, the Land Surveyors in Hong Kong uh, basically are trained by our department. For example, if you look at the percentage, perhaps 80% of the current working land surveyors in the field are, have been trained by our department. So uh, as for my own research, uh, myself, I'm doing some uh, satellite remote sensing. Um, we try to use the so-called radar remote sensing to study the, the Earth. For example, we look at how the Earth's surface deforms how the building structures deforms using satellite data. Uh, we, uh, we actually have also studied uh, uh, glaciers, mountain glaciers, for example, in the Tibet Plateau, uh, how the glaciers have been changing due to climate change over the past you know, several decades or so. Actually, our findings are interesting because we found that uh, some places um, the glaciers actually are diminishing very fast uh, due to um, you know, climate change, global warming. Uh, we also study earthquakes, landslides, or flooding, all these uh, so-called geohazards. We try to make sure you know, the, the urban uh, residents um, have a, a safe living environment. Thank you, Professor Ding. So my, my question is the main thing of this conference. So um, we, we would like to ask your opinion, like in Hong Kong, uh, since you've been here for a long time, uh, in the age of around 18 to 20, 20 years old, what should they do if they wanted to engage, for example, in this aspiration of new space economy? What do they need to prepare themselves? What do they uh, do or what can they do? Yeah, I think uh, space technologies like uh, satellite remote sensing um, are getting more and more important. Uh, for example, when we talk about smart city, these big concepts, um, the data um, are very important you know, to develop, for example, a smart city concept. And uh, satellite based uh, technologies like remote sensing can provide a lot of data we need for smart city development. And uh, if we look at uh, satellite remote sensing, even though we are very powerful now, we can collect a lot of data, but there's still a lot of shortcomings. Uh, we still need much, much more data. So uh, many people actually are predicting the space industry will be developing very fast over the next few decades or so. Therefore, there will be a lot of opportunities. I think to work in this field, um, it's important to, go, to have a, a good science or, or maybe engineering degree. It's good if uh, you can do a bit more research and have some research training for example, by doing a master's degree or PhD. 
uh, because uh, when we talk about the high tech um, space industry, uh, we need a very solid scientific and engineer background. And uh, I know in Hong Kong, actually, the space industry is picking up um, you know, the speed. Uh, for example, some companies have uh, set up some uh, satellite man manufacturing um, uh, lines, factory, um, you know, for manufacturing uh, satellites, and also facilities for launching satellites. But uh, in the same time, I know this industry needs a lot of people but they cannot find good quality people to work you know, on these kind of uh, technologies. So I think uh, the, tech, the opportunities are there. So uh, if uh, you can prepare yourself uh, and uh, you know, to have an um, open mind, you know, even you study an engineering degree, but you can still get into the space industry. So I think uh, um, education might be open-minded and uh, try to look for opportunities. Thank you. Thank you very much.